What is good job, man? Welcome back to another video. Um, the NBA draft is tonight, man. You guys, I'm sure, have been hearing it's been all over ESPN. Um, everything is really winding down to this moment, especially all the crazy moves that's been made and all the big time players that are supposed to be moved that didn't get moved that might end up getting moves, all that stuff. But um, it really all comes down to this draft. So, what I'm doing, you guys can see on the screen, um, is I am on the ESPN mock draft. So, basically, you know, it's a mock draft machine where I plug in the players that I think are going to get drafted. And then after that, um, I compare them to, you know, guys who do this for a living. You know, guys like Chad Ford and um, I forgot the other guy's name. But I'm going to explain the first 14 teams or the first 14 players that get drafted. And then I'll finish out the rest of the draft and then compare them to, you know, the pros. The guys that do this on a daily, yearly basis. So if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And uh, if you're new to the channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. And we're going to start off um, with the first pick. Now, you guys do notice it still has Boston as number one. So Boston traded that pick, and Philly has a number one pick now. Lakers are still the same, and that's about it. No real other movement um, within the other picks. But the first pick I do think is obviously going to be Markel Fultz. Going to Philly, I'm excited to see you know how he gels with other players. I think he's a perfect fit, though, just because... He's a scoring guard. Um, he's a big guard that he's 6'5". And uh, Ben Simmons is a guy that's a playmaker. He loves to pass. You know, he's going to fit right in with that core group that they have. And uh, just mark this mark is down. The Sixers are, I think, my dark horse next season to be the most improved team. Not saying they're going to make it to the playoffs, but I'm saying as far as improvement from this past season's record to next season's record, I think they're going to be one of the top teams. Um, in that category. They're also going to have one of the tallest lineups in the NBA. Everybody stays healthy. Markel Foles, Covington, if he starts at the two, he's like 6'9", 6'7". Um, ben Simmons, obviously, is like 6'10". Sarx is 6'10", and B is like 7'1". So, um, they could have one of the tallest lineups in the NBA. And that also leads to my second pick, um, to the Lakers, and I think that's obviously going to be Lonzo Ball. Let me go ahead and pick these guys first, man. What am I doing, man? Lonzo Ball to the Lakers. And since they did trade D'Angelo Russell, they got Brooke Lopez, which is a great pick. They needed a center. They needed a center for a while now since Paul Gasol left. And I think with this acquisition, man, with Julius Randle, Mark Ingram, um, Lonzo Ball, Jordan Clarkson as their young core, if they get, if they can get Paul George, if maybe he doesn't sign this year, he signs with them next year, they might also have one of the tallest star lineups in the NBA, man. Lonzo 6'6". Um, they went to George at the two. He's like 6'9", 6'10". Ingram's like 6'9", at the three. Julius Randle at the, at the power forward position, he's like 6'9". And then they have Brook Lopez, like 7'1", 7'2". So um, another team that's looking real scary, looking like they're gonna start making some noise in the next few years. And now, to our third pick. Now this pick belongs to the Celtics. Now my first thought would be Josh Jackson, but you know, after seeing that interview by Danny Ainge um, a couple days ago, he mentioned that, you know, he did give up the first pick, but the guy he's going to select with the first pick is still going to be available as the third pick. He's trying to play some mind games, but basically what I think he's saying, you know, if I, if I could ten on my inner NBA executive mind, you know what I'm saying, is that basically he's going to pick a guy that he's very high on and that everybody else is sleeping on. Who I think that guy is, is Jason Tatum. 6'8", small forward from Duke. Um, he's a knockdown shooter. He's young. And I think this is really going to be a good look for the Celtics if they keep this pick. So Josh Jackson is not going to go at number three. But I do think he will end up at number four with the Phoenix Suns. Now, the reason I say this is even though, you know, one of the things about Phoenix is they are known for drafting point guards. They drafted, like, so many point guards and they have so many point guards on their roster. I think the pick for Phoenix has to be Josh Jackson at that small forward position. They got Devin Booker, so they have a, a guy... They have a shooting guard that's 20 years old that dropped 70 points in the NBA game. That's crazy. And I think the perfect type of player to mess that up at the small forward position, so you got two solid wings, is a guy like Jackson who's athletic, who's a slasher. Uh, he can play defense. Um, he can knock down an open shot. Him and Devin Booker, if they get, they, if the Suns are smart and they pick this up, they have two young solid wings that are gonna be killing in the NBA for a long time to come. I think. I think Josh Jackson is the real deal. Now that leads us to Sacramento. Oh, okay. 
trying to, you know, make sure I say good things about Sacramento. Sacramento, bro, they, they're that one franchise in the NBA. It's not my favorite team. I don't root for them or anything like that, but they just, they just get under my skin. They really annoy me, man, because they make some terrible moves. They drafted Hassan Whiteside. They drafted DeMarcus Cousins. They drafted Isaiah Thomas. They draft good players, but they never either coach them right, stick with them to, through the hard times, or they just flat out just give them away for nothing. So, who I think they should pick in this one though, since this is what it's about, it's a mock draft. I think they should get Darren Fox. Let me see, this is why. He's a point guard, 6'2", athletic, he's young, he could make plays for you. You just got Buddy Hill at shooting guard. So you can have two young guys at the back court, you know, who can hold it down and uh, if they mold to the type of players they can be, can end up being really, really good players and a really good tandem um, in the league. Especially nowadays when it's all about the one and two combination, point guard, shooting guard combination. Um, it's, it'd be smart for Sacramento to make this pick at Darren Fox. So, Darren Fox at Sacramento with the fifth pick. That brings us to Orlando. Now, this one, this one's tough, man, because I don't know what Orlando needs, man. Orlando just needs star power. They need a guy that's gonna come in and drop 28 and eight right away, which is crazy, I know, but that's exactly what they need. Do have Evan Fournier, and that's why I don't think they're gonna get Malik Monk, who I think is the guy they should get. You know, I think they need a electrifying score, a guy that's gonna come in and drop 20 a game, and Malik Monk can do that, but I think no one, no one in Orlando, man, they're gonna do something totally different, man. Um, I think Jonathan Isaac might be the guy they're looking for, or the guy that they're gonna end up getting. I would probably get Malik Monk, but I think they're gonna go with Jonathan Isaac. Um, they do have Terrence Ross, and they do have Fournier, so maybe they're not looking at another guard. Now, at Minnesota number seven, this is gonna be a tough one because they kind of have every position plugged in. Um, they got Rubio, who they're trying to let go, but even if they let go of Rubio, they got Chris Dunn. They got Zach Levine coming back from an injury. They got Shabazz Muhammad. They got Andrew Wiggins, Conley Towns, Gorgie Dang, shout out Senegal. So, they don't need another big man. I think they're loaded in the front line. Um, they have good small forwards, a good backup small forward. I think they need another point guard to see or find out who's gonna be that main guy. Now, who I think that main guy is gonna be coming out of there, I do like Malik Monk a lot. I don't think he should slip this far down in the draft, but I think they're gonna get Dennis Smith. Um, the reason I think they're gonna get Dennis Smith is because, you know, even though Chris Dunn got, he didn't get that much playing time in the past season, um, when he did play, I don't know if they liked everything they saw out of him, so they might try another point guard out. And Minnesota is also known for drafting point guards. Um, but that is like the final piece they need to like lock in and just grow old with their with the team that they have. They have a really young core. So I think Dennis Smith is gonna end up going to Minnesota. Now that leaves New York. And you know, New York needs just about anything. They're they're just screwing up everything. But New York is just like Sacramento. It pissed me off. I'm not gonna go into full detail why, but basically, you know, they're gonna give away Melo for nothing. They wanna trade Porzingis. They wanna get the seven footer out of Arizona, who supposedly is just like Porzingis. So they wanna take Porzingis, set him away, get this guy who is supposed to be just like Porzingis, hasn't played an NBA game yet, and then draft him and make him a new Porzingis. I think it's stupid. I think they should get Malik Monk, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna end up going with this, um, Laurie Marconin or whatever his name is out of Arizona. But he's seven foot, you know, he's young. So maybe that'll work out. Looking at this draft so far, we're on number nine, and Dallas is up on the board. Who can Dallas get that can be a game changer? I feel like they're gonna go with either Bam Adebayo out of Kentucky, or they're gonna take a risk and get Malik Monk at that shooting guard position. If I'm Dallas and New York doesn't pick him up, I'm getting Malik Monk. So I think that's where he's gonna end up if he doesn't go earlier. Um, that leaves us as Sacramento again. I don't know who they're gonna get in this one. Um, I feel like they would just, they're the type of team to follow the hype, get a guy like Harry Giles at power forward. They already have Willie Cully signed at center, so I don't think they'll be really needing that position that much. So they might end up getting a guy like TJ Leaf out of UCLA, man. Um, the guy can score, spot up, shoot, he's athletic, he's 6'10", he's young. That might be the guy they end up going with even though, well, they just need anybody. So um, I think they're gonna end up taking TJ Leaf if he's available at power forward. So now we're on Charlotte. Now Charlotte just got Dwight Howard. They got Kemba, they got Batum. So what position do they really need to plug up? I think they need to plug up that shooting guard position, maybe that power forward position. But um, I think if you're gonna draft the best player available, you go with Luke Kennard. 
Um, shooting guard at Duke, North Carolina, ironically. Um, I think he's going to stay in North Carolina, man. I think Charlotte's going to end up taking him. Um, he's a knockdown shooter. He's got size. He's 6'6". Six, six. He's young. He can score. And um, I don't know how much of a defensive liability he is, but I think he can stack up really well next to Kemba, um, having another scoring threat at that guard position. And uh, he can play both guard positions, too. So that's definitely going to be like a two-for-one if, um, if Charlotte can get their hands on. Detroit, I don't really know exactly what they need. They got forwards and centers. They got Andrew Drummond, obviously. They got Caldwell Pope and they got Reggie Jackson, but I think they're trying to get rid of Reggie Jackson. So I think they're gonna end up drafting another point guard. Um, I really do like the guy from Kansas, Frank Mason, but just, just GMs in the league don't take risks on small point guards. Not risks, but they just don't draft small point guards for whatever reason. And then they end up going to their D League cooking and then they get picked up and do well. So I don't think they're gonna get him though. I think Detroit does need a point guard. I think they're gonna end up picking, you know, Frank from France. Um, I'm not gonna say his last name because I'm gonna just flat out butcher, but he's 6'5", 180. Um, he's 18, he's probably really athletic. I'm not just saying that because he's black and he's 6'5", and he's a point guard. Um, I'm just saying that because he just, you know, he looks athletic. <laughs> but I think this would be a good pickup, man, um, especially if you're trying to, they're trying to get rid of Reggie Jackson um, and move forward with Andre Drummond or maybe just start over. I think this is a good pickup. This is um, a guy they could, kind of work up a little bit, maybe he'll end up taking Reggie Jackson's spot, or maybe they'll start him right away. So Frank, at point guard going to Detroit. Bruh. I don't know what Denver needs, man. They they have a solid player at every position, but I actually really like this Justin Jackson pick um, out of North Carolina. He's a scorer, he's athletic, um, he can shoot, and I think you know, Denver is trying to get a new young small forward. They got Wilson Chandler, they got Gallinari, but I feel like they want to move to the next phase. If Justin Jackson's still there, 6'8 small forward, 22 years old, I think they should pick him up. Um, now, we have Miami, you know what I'm saying now. Shout out Miami Heat, you know what I'm saying? Had a jersey, ironically had a jersey, I don't know. Isn't that crazy? I'm doing a draft, like a mock draft and I'm wearing a Miami Heat jersey. But anyways, man, so last night, um, me and Pat Riley got on the phone together. Um, he was talking to me, we we're talking basketball, he's you know, telling me, man, we got a good point guard, we got a solid shooting guard, small forward, we got a center. Um, James Johnson played really well last season. What do we need? I was like, Pat, bro. I was like, for real, for real, y'all need, need a shooting guard. Like, no, y'all need a shooting guard. Y'all need a power forward, man. Whiteside gonna hold it down, Dragon's gonna hold it down, you got Winslow, you got Richardson. Now, what kind of power forward do you need? You need to do it all, stretch the floor, play defense, get rebounds, you know, set good screens, shoot, shoot, shoot a power forward that can really step out there and shoot jumpers. And I was thinking, I was like, yo, Pat, bruh, you know, thank you, by the way, for bringing those three championships to Miami. I was like, yo, Pat, we got to get John Collins out of the way for us. He's a beast. He's athletic. You know, he's the type of player we need right now. You know, we got every position locked. We got players off the bench. We need a power forward. And I think John Collins, if he's still there at that power forward position, 6'10", we're going to pick him up, you know. At least it's what Pat Riley told me. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. He was like, yo, we're going to get him if you're there. I was like, bet. That rounds out my draft. Um, let's go ahead and submit and then compare our draft to the other or professionals. You know, Chad Ford and Jeff Goodman. Uh, let me see. First two picks are the same. And then the third pick, they both have Josh Jackson going at three. I don't. I think he's going to go to the Celtics. Um, and then they have Darren Fox going to the Kings as well, so that's pretty much the same. Jonathan Isaac is six. Um, and then it's pretty much kind of random from there. Uh, after the after about seven, after six picks, it's pretty much you know a toss up of who they're gonna have. Um, they you see they don't have John Collins going to any going to Miami. Um, they don't have TJ Leaf going to Sacramento. They think they're gonna get Zach Collins a center, which is a good pickup because Sacramento could. Could use a center, but you guys can go ahead, pause it, scroll, check out what I have compared to what they have. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section. The draft is only a few hours away, man. Um, pretty excited. This is like one of those fun nights in the NBA, just because you can sit back and you know, for one, watch somebody's life get changed and like snap of a finger, and two, you know, a lot of new young guys um, that are gonna come into the league and make a lot of noise, which I'm excited to see. I think that's like the funnest part of sports in any level is like seeing the new talent, who's gonna be that new breakout athlete. But 
Um, this is it. This is my pick. You guys could watch it. Come back after the draft. You guys could ridicule me. You guys could criticize me. You guys could agree with me. Put that in the comment section. I'll be checking it out. Um, but this is it, man. I usually do this every year, so of course I want to continue another year. Hope you guys did enjoy this. Make sure y'all hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for your boy. And I'll see you guys in the next episode, man. Peace. Look, I got million dollar skins and billion dollar flows. Million dollar skins and billion dollar. I got million dollar skins and billion dollar flows. I put my heart in this world, cause that's just all that I know.